Good morning, you guys, and welcome back to another video. We're starting off exactly where we left off. Uh, real life update here this last week and a half has just been insane for us it feels like everything is breaking all at once it's kind of funny it's it feels like because we were doing the I fix it campaign it, it was just like everything got thrown at us like all right you have to fix everything now so our HVAC our AC unit stopped working our uh, what you call it, fridge, fridge <laughs> stopped working, our uh, dryer like drum blew up, and Molly's car, the CV axle had to be replaced, and the valve cover gasket. It has been the biggest laundry list of things that has happened this week. So I am very thankful for iFixit for sponsoring this week's video because it's gonna help go towards some of that absorbent amount of cost that we've had this week, which was just unexpected stuff that, you know, it's the way life goes. But regardless, they are the perfect sponsor for this week's video. If you guys haven't seen I Fix It, I don't know where you've been, because they've been the sponsor of the entire last month during our Fix It February campaign. It turned out amazing. But I Fix It is uh, a company who makes a bunch of cool toolkits like this one, which help you fix things. This one we actually gave away one a week last month, so you missed out on that, but there's links in the description below if you wanna check this guy out. And hopefully we can do another one of those campaigns maybe in the future, in this year or next year. It'd be awesome. I, I think that y'all really enjoyed that. I really, first of all, I really appreciate everyone for having such a good attitude and positive energy and comments about the series and the partnership with iFixit. This is something that we're really passionate about and we're just really happy to be working with them and we're glad that you guys enjoyed it as well. But another thing that iFixit does that we talked a lot about in the series is they are on kind of the front lines of the right to repair, which is something that comes under attack more often than you would think. It doesn't make it into the news very often, but it's a very real thing. A lot of companies are making it harder and harder for people like us to be able to fix things. Real life example of that was with our HVAC unit. The motor went out on it. There was one single distributor that we could get a motor from through a licensed HVAC person to have it covered under warranty. We couldn't buy it directly from them. There was a six week lead time on the motor, which where we live, you can't live without AC for six weeks. I then had to get another part from another distributor, but they wouldn't sell to the public. It was just a nightmare situation when 
I could have done all of it myself for just a couple hundred bucks instead of having to spend several hundred close to a thousand dollars or more to have someone else do it. It's really frustrating when things like that happen. We did find a workaround, so happy to announce that there was a little workaround there, but, uh, and we were able to get it repaired ourselves. But that's the thing, that's, that's why I love partnering with iFixit. I think that they support really great stuff like that and we're just really excited to be partnering with them. If you guys wanna check their stuff out, there's links in the description below as always and let's get back into this build. But real quick, we've shown that one a lot, but we also have those two kits oh, okay. that are right there. Well, this one is very similar to what's already in that kit, so I won't show you that one. But, but you this can one, get that one separate. Yeah, you can get them independently. This one's super nice. Yeah. We're missing a few. It's okay. <laughs> They're somewhere. But those are really nice, so those will be linked down yeah. below too. Alright, back to the build. Oh, it's so heavy. <laughs> oh, there's a lot of fluid in it. Oh man, there's a lot of fluid in it. There shouldn't be a lot of fluid in it. Can you hold that it's without letting it dump? It's gonna dump if you don't get a good handle. on it. Put the camera down. So unfortunately, on the transmission pan that holds all the oil, which is the thing that was leaking, there are a couple of bolts that have somehow damaged the threads. Now, they weren't damaged when I put them in, so something about time and rattling, I'm not really sure how exactly, but they won't torque to the correct setting because the threads in the inside are worn out of the actual housing of the transmission, which is not, not super great, obviously. So what we're gonna do is something I've never done before using a kit that I just purchased online and know very little about. On our transmission, we're just we're just going for it here. What you do is you take a drill bit. You drill the hole out bigger. You then tap that hole so you make new threads for a bigger bolt. You then put this little coil in there, which is the correct size for the bolt you're currently using. Follow me? Yeah, that's how you do it. And there's some other little multi little steps in there, but that's the essential thing. Drill the hole out bigger, re-tap it, insert this little coil, which then steps it down to the bolt size that you have. How hard could it be? What could go wrong? Under a car. Drilling into a transmission. Can't drill too far, I'm assuming. They don't really specify how far to drill. Yeah. <coughs> What could go wrong? Also, like any form of any debris in the transmission is horrible. So, uh, we gotta keep all of the shavings out as well. Let's see how it goes. Uh, which one do I choose? <laughs> Going lightweight. Lightweight and small? Nope. I don't want a lot of power and I don't want to be all torque in my hand. Makes sense. I'm thinking oil is probably a good idea, although there's a ton of oil down there already. And I'm gonna do this one step at a time. I'm gonna drill first. Oh, this is pains me, honestly. This just feels so wrong in so many ways. It's also really hard to see if I'm drilling straight. We are going to go very slow. Very slow. Did you just dip that in there? Yeah, I need some oil. Cutting oil. I feel like that's deep enough, but I don't actually know. I mean, the other hole goes deeper, but I feel like you don't have to go that deep with this. Yeah, we're on a 
call that for sure deep enough. And now I have to remember where the other one is. It's back here. Oh, oh this truck. Oh. This one definitely seems like you don't want to drill too deep and I'm thinking that's deep enough boys <coughs> step one potential so success so far so good step two is gonna be a slightly more challenging one step two tap the hole uh well, I can already see one problem what I don't think this is gonna spin very far in there I ain't gonna work super well, bud. Oh. Much more pain in the butt than expected. Alright, can you get me the drill? Did you put it back inside? This is definitely the sketchy route. No other way it wasn't working, so. So this little guy has got a little tab on it that slots into this tool. That way you can spin it up in there. And then once it's in there, you got to break that tab off using a different tool. And I hope this one comes out a bit easier than the other one. Good Lord! I don't think it's supposed to be that difficult to take out. Son of a mother duck. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I knew, knew you were about to say that. Oh. Come on now. Jeez. This little guy. <laughs> shove up in there. I'm not supposed to get rid of that little tab for you. Sometimes it'd be a little some persuasion. All right, I'm gonna say she's out of the way as much as possible at that point. All right, well, maybe the problem's solved. Maybe it's worse, who knows. Confidence. I have confidence, just not in this transmission. So also, we're just sort of ignoring the fact that there's still an accumulation of oil here. We haven't actually put oil back in the engine yet. Honestly, it's probably a rear main seal on this engine but that requires either pulling the engine or pulling the transmission out to replace and uh, well we're not gonna replace that until we have to replace either the engine or the transmission because I don't think that's leaking that much there's that <laughs> this is such a great angle who's taking a nap under here this is not a lovely place to take a nap I'm all kinds of scrunched up maybe for your little <laughs> Tiny butt. <laughs> On the right side, though, the frame looks good. The what? The frame. What's the frame? Oh. Everything you painted? Oh. Oh, gosh. Also, on top of all of that, we now have to put probably like $100 worth of fluid back in this. Maybe more. $100? Or more. Of transmission fluid? Yeah. That's how much it is? Well, it's not that the fluid's that expensive. It's that this thing takes about 18 quarts to fill up from empty. So I'm thinking it's going to take a good 10 to 12 quarts. Every time you've done that, that's how much it costs? Yeah. But I've reused the fluid before. But this time, I was partially too lazy to reuse the fluid. But also, the two catch pans I have, like they have so much contamination from so many other things I was like uh, I'm not even gonna yeah. attempt to reuse this 
I think this truck will just start rolling back if I push it. No, don't. Dylan, we are right behind well, the you, wheels. You go ahead and get out. No, because you're not going to be able to get out either. <laughs> That's kind of the point. Why would you want to do that? I'm so done with this. Stop. Because uh, I've spent the majority of the last month underneath this truck <laughs> on the freaking. <laughs> okay, so the good part will be when we're not under the truck anymore. Yeah, okay. Yeah. You know, doing the things that you can actually see. Well, I hope that uh, I hope that I improve my OCD on this. After this, I hope this teaches my OCD a lesson. To oh. not be. <laughs> to not be so particular. Or it's not even, it's not OCD, it's perfectionism, that's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> you call this nap time chats with Dylan? Under the truck with Dylan. <laughs> Anything else? Yeah, I should have replaced this oil pan when I did it, but I was in just such a bad mood that night when I was like getting frostbite and under here and replacing it. <laughs> the very first night. Yeah, and it was supposed to rain the next day and then I just put it back on and I should, I should have replaced it. Do we have another one? No. Okay. But, whatever. Here's my goal. Let's get the back half of this truck done and the front half running again. And then, like, we'll do, a, like, a stage two. Or, like, a... Yeah, stage... Second round? Second round. It's, like, the front half. You know what I mean? So we'll get the back half done in one go. That way we can use the truck again. And then we'll do the front half. Man, I could've done this all along. I'm replacing this idler pulley. You can see this is the tensioner pulley. It springs freely. There's no crunching or anything like that. This pulley here is the idler pulley. So, oh, it's rubbing the pipe clamp, which won't be there. Now it smooths, moves, 
Now it moves freely, but this is the old one. Hear that mm -hmm. crunchiness? Mm -hmm. That's what it's causing a little squeak. And those bearings, bad bearings. Yeah. Hmm. You can see how worn it is. Yeah. That is a four dollar part. Super simple to do. Retention. It's easy to just go on the tensioner, pull it back. I didn't really take anything off, so it's making it much easier. Should this have gone in with the... No, no, surely not. Do you want me to go look at footage? Or a picture or something? No, because it wouldn't matter. It's not like it's going to be able to... Well, maybe it would have been able to. Do you really even need it? I'm sure the caution fan was up. to get this thing mostly back together because I just I don't like it sitting open out here but there's still a lot of stuff that I want to do in this engine compartment wow. uh, I want to do the throttle position sensor which is down here the water temp sensor sensor which is here uh, another sensor here new spark plugs new wires new ignition coil there's a lot of stuff that I want to do in here but I've decided that I'm gonna get it all back together and get it running again so that I verify that I have no issues, if that makes sense. I don't wanna replace a bunch of parts right now. Go try to start it, for instance, and it run rough, and then I'm like, I don't know what the problem is. It could have been literally a faulty sensor that I installed, and I don't know which it is. So I just want to get it back running the way it was and then we'll come back to the engine compartment and do all the stuff that we need to do to it later, which is less convenient, but in the worst case scenario will help a lot. So yeah, which I gotta replace thermostat gasket. I'm gonna do that beforehand. This is your thermostat. This is what open opens and closes to allow coolant into your engine, which is what keep your engine at the appropriate temperature hmm. so if your engine's ever running hot very well could be that you have an old thermostat which is this thing and it's clogged or stuck um, meaning that it's um, not allowing coolant through the other thing though is if you start your engine and you ever notice that like your engine's just never getting up to temperature it's really not good for for an engine to not get up to temperature you want it to get hot things the oil and everything needs to get to a certain temperature to work properly so if your engine is just never getting hot it could actually be that this is stuck open and that it's just circulating coolant all the time so this one is opens at 192 degrees fahrenheit and uh, each vehicle you know has a different temperature they want it to open at but regardless it's a super simple thing to replace it's literally a couple bolts a gasket pop it in I'm glad I got it back to this point. I mean, I feel pretty confident. I just got a handful of things to put it back on. Yeah. She could run again. Yeah. Other than fuel. I, was I gotta to say, hook other up than the gas tanks. Hook, hook the fuel system back up. But the fuel system's 
that's already that's all down there it's nothing in here so speaking of gas our new gas tank came today mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. no dents it's not broken so that's good <laughs> I guess this is the correct one. I mean, in what world does that? I don't think that's the right one. Cause these are different. Different in what way? Like, they're not going to face that way. Well, because they go to the, they bend to the left and back, and those are to the right and back. Okay, so it's the other one? Yeah. So they must sit like this, no? So I'm adding this rubber in here. They didn't actually have this in the like stock form of the truck, but this is gonna help reduce vibrations and it'll help with, uh, and it'll help with corrosion a bit, even though it's not that big of a deal up here, but it'll just help protect this, this tank from these really beefy straps that go over here. And the biggest thing is reduce vibration so you don't hear it rattling.
right guys, that's gonna wrap up this week's video. We got most of everything done on the rear end. We just have to get the final bit of the wiring harness back through, but we're waiting to finish the last step up near the engine to fish it all down through. So in next week's video, hopefully, fingers crossed it doesn't rain all week, which is what it looks like it's gonna do. Uh, we'll get all of this wrapped up and hopefully get the truck started again, which is really exciting. But yeah, we, uh, we did get a lot done this week and we're excited where this truck is going. It's looking amazing. We hope you guys are enjoying the series and uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching.